How's it feel to be back? Feels good. I'm excited. <laughs> Your first video got one of the most interesting responses I've ever had to a video. Really? And I want to talk all about that. But first, will you introduce yourself for people who didn't see your first video? Sure. So I'm Celeste, um, I'm 25, and um, some of the things I talked about in my first video are that I have um, Turner Syndrome. I also talked about like some things around gender identity, and I also talked about some stuff around like mental health. I identify as non-binary, so I don't identify 100% as a boy or 100% as a girl, I feel most comfortable um, kind of using they, them pronouns. What is Turner Syndrome? So Turner Syndrome is a genetic condition where um, someone who is designated female at birth, they usually have two X chromosomes and one of those is either completely or partially deleted. So that would mean like you um, have an X chromosome that either just is not there or is not functioning completely properly basically yeah <laughs> now the response we got to the video are you ready for this i'm ready <laughs> the response we got to your first video was one of the more interesting ones i ever got and it came primarily from parents of kids with turner syndrome okay. now before we get into this i have to say that 99.5 percent of the comments and just everything we got from that video was super positive mm -hmm. but there was a little bit of pushback right and we both saw it from different departments, yes. but I'll, I'll go first. I saw the pushback coming from parents of kids with Turner syndrome mm -hmm. because you identify as non-binary. Right. And they said, my child has Turner syndrome and she's a she, she's a female. People with Turner syndrome aren't non-binary. Right. Um, so I do think that is a really interesting <laughs> response. Um, I was very much just talking about my own story and how I personally identify. So I was not trying to, you know, speak for the, the whole community or say that that's how everyone with TS identifies. Um, I do think that like, you know, TS may or may not have impacted how I identify gender wise. I don't really know because I've never not had Turner syndrome. So I don't know what I would be like without, you know, having that as part of my experience. But I mean, non-binary is just kind of how I explain my gender identity. It's what makes me the most comfortable. It's what feels right for me. And that's not necessarily true for anyone else and it could be true for anyone regardless of whether they have TS or not. What advice do you have for a person who is struggling to fit in with their community because of the way they identify? Yeah I mean I think I'm still kind of working that out a little bit myself but kind of one of the ways that I've responded is just being like you know how cool is it how unique I am and then I have this like experience that I can offer that not a lot of people have so just like as i've gotten older i've just become more and more like proud of who i am and open about it and just very willing to kind of be like you know it might not be like other people it might not even be like other people in the communities that i'm like a part of <laughs> but you know it's me and I, i'm cool with that <laughs> did you see any pushback yourself i did <laughs> Where did you see it from? So I did see some people with DS actually who were saying, you know, that they very much identify as a woman and that they felt uncomfortable with kind of my talking about being non-binary. I have to make something really clear though, because when I started getting emails, mm -hmm. how dare you represent Turner syndrome this way? Right. My daughter's a she. I thought to myself, oh my goodness, did I not include that clip? where Celeste said most people with Turner syndrome identify as a female as she. Yeah. Because you made a point to say that five or six times. Right. So I immediately went back and watched the whole video and you said it. What do you view yourself as? So back then I kind of had this viewpoint which is the viewpoint of a lot of people with Turner syndrome like oh that doesn't make me any less of a woman. A lot of people who I've met with TS are actually like quite feminine and very happy identifying as female. So then I thought to myself, people are just getting mad that you identify as non-binary. 
Yeah, I mean, every single TS event that I've been to, the majority of people identify as women. That's very much like the majority of the community. <laughs> yeah, and it's very much representative of people as a whole, right? Because like, like I said, anyone can identify as non-binary regardless of whether they have TS or not. It just has to do with gender identity. So, you know, you're going to have like a much smaller percentage of the population who identifies that way and a much larger percent who identify as like cisgender. It's been two and a half years since that first video. So we've had a lot of time to process it. But what did you think when you first felt that pushback? Yeah, so I, I definitely had like a little bit of a hard time with that. I, I wanted to immediately like jump in and like be like no 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 like <laughs> don't be upset like I'm not telling you like what you need to think or feel like I just kind of wanted to to make everyone feel better but then the more I thought about it the more I realized like you know there's gonna be a, a lot of people where I wasn't going to, to get to do that. Maybe that's okay too. I mean, like their reaction is their reaction. And I can know for myself that I was only speaking about like my experience and like I know what my intentions were. So I kind of tried to make myself feel better, better that way. <laughs> because I was like, you know, I can't be running around like literally like in the comments, like answering every single person. <laughs> who was like, I don't know about that. <laughs> it's not like a negative thing if someone had that initial reaction. I, I completely understand it because, you know, it is a very sensitive topic. Like a lot of people with TS, you know, growing up, like being a woman is like a, a kind of a sensitive thing in that community. So I, I completely understand the reaction and I would just kind of challenge people a little bit to um, you know, listen to what we're saying, that we're not trying to tell them how they need to identify in any, any kind of way. Just I'm just telling my story. <laughs> is everybody with Turner syndrome infertile? Um, so it is like a very, very common symptom, kind of like short stature is one of like the ones that pretty much everyone has. Uh, I would have to look it up, but I think about like 2% of people with TS um, are able to get pregnant. You mentioned off camera how much society values giving birth. Yes. Could you talk about that a little bit more? Sure. So I don't know that um, people necessarily realize that they're doing it. Um, but you know, everything that like, in terms of like the media, or even in terms of, you know, people you're talking with in your life, as you're growing up, there is such an emphasis on um, being able to have kids and having that be like the most meaningful part of your life and how much it transforms your life for like I think especially for women just like that pressure of just like oh this is what it means to be a woman like this it's is everywhere what, yeah it'll like complete you basically and you know there's always like that trope in the media as well of like that person who didn't have kids and like <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's, it's interesting. And I've like kind of learned to block it out as I got older. But, um, personally, I've always been someone who's like been very interested in having a family. So there was like a whole grieving process almost that you have to go through for when you learn and kind of like realize over the years that that's not going to be a possibility. And I think part of that is like, the messages that you get growing up of like, oh, like this is what, you know, people are supposed to do as they get older. They're supposed to get married. They're supposed to have kids. Like this is the important things in life. And you're kind of processing all those messages that you've gotten over the years about that. It's not only in media and songs and TV shows, but it's also, you hear it from your friends and family as well. Right. Exactly. So do you think the important society places on having kids might have been part of the negative reaction the Turner Syndrome community had to the first video when you said you identify as they them? Yeah, I mean, I think it definitely does because I think, um, you know, just knowing that such a high percentage of the community does like struggle with infertility and a lot of us, you know, have to take like hormones to go through puberty. I mean, it can be a definite struggle I feel like for people in the the community to um 
to feel like you know a like full woman if that makes sense or to feel effeminate and it's I mean I don't want to speak necessarily for anyone else but I have talked with other people about that of just how like you know how that can impact how they view themselves and so for someone who does identify as a woman I can understand why they would feel very like protective of that and very you know like if anyone they felt like was kind of saying something against that they would feel like they needed to be defensive and I get that so I love how graceful you're being with everybody who had a negative reaction to your first video but was there a, a part of you that was hurt by it um yeah a little bit I mean I think honestly it was um you know it was very balanced out by the positive reactions like you said like that was definitely helpful or like even speaking to I got like messages especially when the video first came out from other people with TS who did identify you know either as non-binary or trans men and like they would tell me like oh wow like I didn't even like necessarily know that there were other people with TS out there like me. So when we hear the word intersectionality, mm -hmm. this is kind of a good example of it. Right. Because it's two identities meeting. So not only do you have Turner syndrome, but you're also non-binary. Exactly. And the fact that you're non-binary, it seems like it excluded you from the Turner syndrome community. I don't know if it did. I might be putting words in your mouth. You'll have a second to correct <laughs> that in just a moment. But at the very least, it gave people a negative taste in their mouths when they saw your video. Right, yeah, I mean, I definitely did feel that way, you know, I I didn't have the experience of meeting very many people with Turner Syndrome actually until I was really in my early teens when I was like spending a good amount of time with other people in the community and at that point I did always feel like very separate from even them because I'm like, oh, this is like my my people, this is where I should feel connected, but then there was still that part of me where I was like, oh, I'm still different in this way. So it was hard to connect with them, if that makes sense. And it did make me feel like kind of isolated, even from, you know, when I was at like a TS camp with everyone else having TS too. After you used the word intersex in the first video, mm -hmm. I Googled it to make sure that Turner syndrome is an intersex condition and everything okay. that I read said it is. So why was there still yeah. pushback? Yeah, I mean, I think there is is pushback because historically there has been some debate about whether, like, you know, any ambiguity in chromosomes, meaning like, you know, kind of chromosomes that don't fit into the XX or the XY, whether that should be included under the umbrella of intersex. And, I mean, personally, like I said, for me, I think that it is and that's a label that I like to use to describe my experience um, but I really think mostly the pushback doesn't come so much from that like debate about whether or not it's included as just like the negative connotations people have with that term which you know is a shame because there's nothing really bad about that term or labeling yourself that way and the more people who openly use it and the more people who talk about it the less stigma that there will be attached to it. So I think that's important too. <laughs> it seems like this is something you've thought long and hard about and it's how you identify. Yeah, exactly. I've spent a lot of time. <laughs> Intersex is basically just like a general term for any kind of condition where um, someone doesn't fit into like the the mold of what is considered like a biological male or a biological female. You mean chromosome wise? Yeah, that can be one way, or it can also be um, in terms of, like, having, like, just, like, ambiguous, like, physical traits, like, ambiguous genitalia, or, like, it can be a whole bunch of different things. But chromosomes is definitely one of the ways um, that you can be intersex. And that is actually, it's interesting because it's, like, it's separate from gender identity. Um, so, like, having an intersex condition doesn't necessarily say anything about how one will end up identifying gender-wise, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, it's, I mean, it was like, it's a whole complicated topic to try and fit into like a, you know, relatively short video, so I understand why people were confused. So is intersex purely physical? It is, yeah. It's not speaking about how someone identifies at all. It's just like, uh, 
like I said, a general term for any kind of physical condition that would leave someone a little bit more in the middle. For people who have such a strong reaction to using that term, it has historically been a, a very stigmatized label and a very stigmatized term. So I would just encourage people to think about that a little bit more and think about why they have such trouble with that term or why it would be harmful for that to describe Turner syndrome because I think a lot of it does come from just the negative connotations that come along with identifying as intersex. What was it like growing up and not knowing who you were? Yeah, I mean, it was it was definitely it was difficult. I mean, I would try and find like people who I could kind of like kind of had little pieces of me that I could like glom onto. <laughs> like I had one um, teacher, for example, in my high school who um, was like very out and proud and like openly identified as gay. And like, I kind of turned myself almost into like a little bit of like a mini her. Like we ended up with like the same haircut. I had like the same glasses. It was just kind of like, okay, like this makes me feel comfortable. Like having someone who I know can understand me and just like I don't know just knowing that it was difficult to be able for people to completely understand my experience because they hadn't gone through it and I wasn't around other people who had gone through you know a lot of the things that I had it was hard and I didn't even have all the information you know, to be able to kind of figure myself out when I was little, there was like a lot of things that I think people didn't even even think to present as possibilities, like if that makes sense. Like for example, when you're growing up, it's just an assumption that you're straight. So especially, you know, historically, it's been very easy for people to just not talk to their kids about, hey, you know, if you're like, not feeling like that describes you there are these other words out there <laughs> like that we can teach you about or like these other options and we'll love you no matter what when identity became a big topic it was really easy for me to say oh who cares we're all people i love everybody right. but can you really talk about why it is important to find your identity when you struggle with it and how that changes your life when you kind of yeah. realize there's a word for what you're experiencing yeah, I mean, there is something that um, basically I've heard people call like gender euphoria. And it's just like that sense of like feeling like excited and relieved when you finally have an explanation for the way that you've been feeling and you finally feel like you found like a label that fits you because, you know, you're looking at everyone else and everyone else seems very happy with like just living life the, with the terms that they were given <laughs> and you're just kind of like hmm so why does this not seem to feel right to me and like you're just like constantly thinking about it and just when you find that label and you find that community it's just like a sense of relief and being able to be like oh okay so now I can find other people like me you know I can talk about this I have like a word for what I've been going through which is just it's it's a great feeling. <laughs> was there a little bit of a struggle there? Because once you had that gender euphoria, you couldn't really identify with the Turner Syndrome community? Yeah, definitely. Because, like, I feel like, especially for me, <laughs> there's, like, so many different, like, facets of me where I feel like I have a lot of trouble fitting into just one community, if that makes sense, which is very much, like you said, the, I guess, the essence of intersectionality. Um, but like, you know, I don't feel like I completely fit in with other TS people. I don't feel like I completely fit in in the LGBT community because a lot of times, you know, the like disability piece isn't, you know, really addressed or talked about or I'm not around other people in that community when I'm with LGBT people or like... You've given a lot of specific examples of how the intersectionality affects you within the Turner Syndrome. Can mm -hmm. you give a more specific about how the intersectionality impacts you in the LGBTQ community? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting because like 
people will talk about, you know, like LGBT activism, but they won't really necessarily like think about things like accessibility or like, you know, this is another piece of my <laughs> identity, but like I'm also like a person in recovery. So like a lot of LGBT spaces, just based on the community's history, have historically been bars or like clubs. So it's kind of like, okay, so there's not really like necessarily like a good space there for those two identities. <laughs> Congratulations, by the way, you've been updating me on your recovery. Okay. Would you yeah. like to share anything about that? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely open to sharing about it. Share as much as you would like. Okay, so yeah, I mean, it's it's been a journey. <laughs> Um, it's definitely not been like perfect the whole way. Um, but I would say that like one of the most important things I learned is just that you just got to keep trying. Is life better sober? 1000%. Yeah. I mean, one of the, the hallmarks of addiction, especially, you know, when you're in it or in very early sobriety is that you can kind of convince yourself with a million different rationalizations or reasons that, you know, life is preferable, you know, high or drunk, but it's just, I mean, it's not true. <laughs> like when, you know, even just like this past weekend, you know, I'm holding my nephew who's just a few months old and he's like cuddling into my shoulder and I'm just kind of like, you know, how many times has there been where it would have been very possible that I either would have not been there for that or I would not have been invited or, you know, able to be there with my family and there I am, I'm going to remember it. I'm having like this moment and it's just such a simple thing, but it just means so much and you just get to have, I mean, life just gets better and better the longer you stay in sobriety for sure. So. Yeah. Is there anything else from the first video that you would like to discuss? Yeah, so, um, I mean, I kind of, like, talked a little bit about, um, like I said, some of the physical symptoms of TS, but I didn't really go into, like, the cardiac thing, and that has been a very large part of my life recently, so I thought that would be something good to discuss. Yeah, how does it impact your heart? Yeah, so, um, basically for me, I when I was born, they thought that I might need to get open heart surgery right away. And my parents were like very relieved when they cleared me and they were like, no, doesn't need like open heart surgery right now. You can take your baby home. And um, I just had to constantly be following up. And I was told by my cardiologist that one of my very, I've just had thousands of checkups <laughs> with cardiology, but uh, one of those checkups that I would probably be able to get to about 40 or 50 before I needed my, my valve replaced, um, which was, you know, a complication of Turner syndrome. And I um, probably would have made it kind of close to that, <laughs> except for I had another heart issue related to Turner syndrome, which was some dilation of my aorta. And um, that is actually one of the reasons that we lose like a lot of people with TS is um, they will have dilation in their aorta and then it'll just kind of like, it's basically like an aneurysm and it'll separate. And if you do not get medical attention within a very short period of time, that can be a, a fatal complication. So it's very important that people with TS, you know, are on top of their heart health, are constantly getting their hearts checked and I was doing that and they were like, your aorta is dilated and because you have TS, we don't want to mess around with that. <laughs> Basically, we want to make sure that we, we fix that. So um, actually, almost exactly a year ago, which is kind of funny, I went in and I got open heart surgery and they were like, while we're in there fixing your aorta, we're going to replace your valve too. So I not only had like a graft put on my aorta, but I have a mechanical valve now. <laughs> what does it feel like to get this all off your chest? It's actually feeling very, very good. <laughs> yeah, I don't often get a, a chance to talk about like, you know, this kind of thing, especially not in as much depth. So just being able to, to 
be open and share how I'm feeling. It's really, really nice. <laughs> I wanted to thank you for talking about these sensitive topics. Mm -hmm. I know that it can be something that you had to put a lot of forethought into. And I also appreciate that you did it in a way that welcomes everyone to the table, regardless of what they thought about that first video. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. It was great to see you again. It's so good to see you too. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, no, just that I really appreciate everyone wanting to come and watch a second video with me. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it.